according to Mark. Upon leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered Simon's and Andrew's house with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told Jesus about her. Jesus went over to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up, and the fever left her. Then she went about her work. After sunset, as evening drew on, they brought to Jesus all who were ill and possessed by demons. Everyone in the town crowded around the door. Jesus healed many who were sick with different diseases and cast out many demons. But Jesus would not permit the demons to speak because they knew who he was. Rising early the next morning, Jesus went off to a lonely place in the desert and prayed there. The Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. It was almost five years ago now, and I can still see her smile. It was a beautiful smile, a smile which I often return to in my mind's eye. I have long since forgotten her name, but her smile I will never forget. It was a smile which she brought to me every day for about a week, a smile that calmed me, soothed me, at a time when my fear was at a fevered pitch. I had traveled to Vancouver to be at my mother's bedside. Mom was deathly ill and we weren't sure that she was going to make it. Standing there looking down at the woman who looking down at the woman who had nursed me through all of my childhood illnesses, I felt so very helpless. Now, even though I'm a pastor and I have been trained to visit the sick, visiting my mom, I was simply a daughter. I was not a pastor. Helpless and afraid, just standing there, sitting there, waiting for the doctors and nurses to heal my mom. Every morning, the smiling woman would, would come into the room and she would soothe my fear. All it took was her beautiful smile. Yes, she was on the hospital staff, and yes, it was her job to come in every morning to take my mother's food order. But she wasn't required to be kind. Her kindness went beyond her smile. I could hear her kindness in her voice and feel her kindness in the patient way she tried ever so gently to coax mom into ordering something, anything, to help her to get stronger. I could hear her kindness when she turned her attention away from my mom to focus on me. You should go for a walk. Get some fresh air. You're no good to your mom if you don't take care of yourself. Her kindness was not part of her job, not required of her, but like her smile, her kindness soothed my fevered fears and drove away the demons long enough for me to recognize her as my sister and to capture a glimpse of the love which she embodied. Our ancestors tell us that Jesus had that same kind of power. Now, I don't know if he eased fevers or drove away demons with a smile, but I believe that kindness had a role in Jesus' ability to bring about healing. On Friday, I found myself in the grocery store. And it was as if every one of the people in that store had, had spiked a fever at the very same time. Some of us were trying to keep our selfish demons at bay. Yes, there were more than a few who were completely possessed by demons. But on the whole, 
Our polite Canadian instincts managed to keep us relatively civil. But our civility was sorely tested as we searched for an easy way out of that grocery store. Now I witnessed a few ugly moments. I also saw many kindnesses. Strangers helping one another. Strangers sharing information. Strangers expressing dire warnings. You could feel the fever beginning to rise. And driving home, I remembered the last time that beautiful woman, my sister, if only I could remember her name, I remembered the last time that she gifted me with a smile. She had very kindly and very patiently convinced my mom to try ordering a dinner. And when she turned to me, she explained that she was going to be off work for the next few days. But she told me not to worry about my mom because she had left a note with the nice young man who would be there for the next few days. She had told him to take good care of us and she explained that my mom needed extra help with the menu. Then she placed her hand on my arm and she gave me that beautiful smile of hers and it was as if the fever lifted. In the kindness of a woman whose name I cannot remember, I was embraced by the love in which we all live and move and have our being. And over the next few weeks and months, we are all going to experience more than our fair share of fevers and we will be visited by fearful demons. This pandemic threatens all of us and it threatens those we love. Our fevers and the fevers of our neighbors will require as much kindness as we can muster. The demons that are lining up to haunt us will only be driven away by love. Now more than ever, it is time for each one of us to, in the words of the Apostle Paul, clothe ourselves with heartfelt compassion, with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive whatever grievances we have against one another. Forgive in the same way God has forgiven us. Above all else, put on love, which binds the rest together and makes them perfect. Let Christ's peace reign in our hearts, since as members of one body, we have been called to that peace. Dedicate yourselves to thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, rich as it is, dwell in you. Instruct and admonish one another wisely. We don't have to smile. We don't have to be kind. We don't even have to be courageous. We can choose to let our demons run wild. We can infect one another with fear and let the fevers continue to rise. Or we can take strength from one another, trusting that the one in whom we live and move and have our being is love. Dear sisters and brothers, beloveds, when all is said and done, and this COVID-19 becomes a memory, let it be said of us above all else, we put on love. We clothed ourselves with compassion, with kindness, gentleness, and patience. Let us embody the love that is the mystery that we call God, so that all the world may know the healing power of the one who is our lover, beloved, and love itself. Amen. <laughs>